Prophet David Taylor here <clears throat> for my weekly prophetic broadcast. So let's jump right in and get started. All right, let's start with the word of prophecy. Or Facebook connection. Okay, there it is back. In the name of Jesus, I command that connection to work. Huh. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you just thanking you for this day. Thanking you for another chance to dive into your word. Thanking you for the revelation of your spirit. Thanking you for understanding that can only come from the Holy Ghost. And thanking you for having audience with God Most High. Thank you for the opportunity to have the ear and the eye of the Lord God Almighty. Because that is truly a privilege. Because it's not because we're worthy, oh God. It's because you're worthy. So we give you the glory and we give you the praise and we give you the honor that's due your name. And we want to come before you correct with, with, with thanksgiving and praise and joy for the opportunity to fellowship with you, to learn from you, hear from you, and be used of you. So speak through my mouth, I surrender my brain, my tongue, my hands, my thoughts, my mouth, my words, everything to the Holy Ghost, that you might breathe through me and speak through me and let your will be done, not my will but thine be done. And we thank you for it and we believe you for it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right, so, as always, because y'all know I, I'm consistent, I say the same things every week, as always, I'm going to give you a lot of information, so you're going to need to watch this video more than once to get everything that's uh, in here, because there's a, a lot going on, there's a lot that I'm going to release, okay? So, we're going to start with my tagline, what's my tagline? My tagline is that God already told you what was going to happen. If you would just listen to the prophets, one of the advantages of being a Christian is that you can get a prophetic word from God and tell you what's going to happen before it happens. And no matter where you are in the prophetic, there's always another level. There's always some more stuff to learn and some more things that you can learn how to do as a prophet or under a prophetic mantle or walking in the prophetic as the anointing. There's always more things you can do like learning how to anticipate anticipate what the devil's going to do before he does it. Did you know that? Did you know that you can get to a point in the prophetic where God begins to reveal to you the moves that the enemy is going to make before he makes them? So you can be ready. You can already be set up for victory because you already knew what was coming. Did you know that? So that's why I say it all the time. God already told you what was going to happen. Stop living like worldly people. Stop living like worldly people. Helene says she need that. Stop living like worldly people. Stop living like, like, like you can't know what's going to happen before it happens. Like you can't prepare for the future. Because you've got the Holy Ghost if you're a Christian. You've got the third person of the Trinity living inside of you that knows everything that's going to happen before it happens. Now just think about that. See what I mean? But you've got to grow to that point where you can handle that, Okay. So I'm going to, again, say welcome to all my audiences, to Facebook Live, those of you that are watching me live on Facebook, those of you that are watching me live on Periscope, and those of you that are watching the replay on YouTube. Thank you so much. God bless you for tuning in and checking it out. Uh, please like and share when God releases a prophetic gift, okay? Whether it be a prophet or a prophetic mantle or prophetic word, it's designed to affect change. Okay, a prophetic word from God or a prophet is going to change your family, is going to change your neighborhood, is going to change your city, is going to change your state, is going to change your region, is going to change your country, and is going to change the world, all nations. The prophetic word of God has the ability to function on any or all of those levels. So I want you to please like and share this video, and let this video uh, be broadcast and be shared as many places as you can. Okay? All right, if you want to sow into my ministry, uh, Matthew 10, 41, who, who, whoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. I have a paypal.me link uh, on all my profiles, paypal.me, and also Amazon Smile. Okay? All right, now how you find me is always hashtag everything with hashtag PDT. That's how you know it's me, because I know there's other people out there named David Taylor, and there's plenty of prophets out there. But if you want to find me online, Always look up David Taylor, hashtag PDT. That's how you get to my stuff, okay? I'm on every week. Um, this time, Sunday afternoon, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, with my live prophetic word and teaching. 
and then I'm on on second Thursday nights. Now, I know there wasn't a post from this Thursday night because I was having severe upload issues. So I'm going to try to get that worked out so I can post the broadcast because I know, I know if you tuned in Thursday night, there was nothing there. There were severe uploading issues, okay? So, but I'm going to try to get that worked out. I will let you know when the No More Genies from this month is posted. So again, I apologize for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we're just going to move forward. And uh, you can always watch the replay on Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. Okay? All right. Let's dive right in. And don't worry about the noise in the background. It's not my laundry going. Don't worry about that. Okay. All right. Here we go. The word for today is, in God we trust. In God we trust. And that's printed on American money. So the prophetic word for today is, in God we trust. But... I'm not going where you think I'm going with that, okay? So let's look at our scripture. Our foundational scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, now, most of Paul's writings were letters. Uh, the Bible calls them epistles. That means letters, but they're holy epistles. They're the word of God. Basically, there were churches in the region that wrote to Apostle Paul and asked him questions about the new covenant and asked him questions about the way Christians should live, because the people that Paul ministered to, the Gentiles, were non-Jews. They had no relationship with Jesus Christ at all. They never heard of him. So Paul had to teach them how to live as Christians. And so much of what you see in the Apostle Paul's writing, the epistles are letters to churches where he's answering questions and showing them how to live. So there was a church at Corinth, and that's why the name of this book is Corinthians. The Corinthian church, the believers, the Christians in the city of Corinth. And this is the second letter Paul wrote to them. Okay? Just a little background on 2 Corinthians. So we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 8, 9, and 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 8, 9, and 10. Going off the prophetic word of, in God we trust. Verse 8. Uh, I'm reading out of the... King James, but I'm going to read some other versions. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Okay, so let's start at the top, verse 8. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia. Stop. First thing I want to tell you is that you've got to stop being surprised when trouble comes your way. Many times when we're out there in the will of God doing what the Lord told us to do, because Apostle Paul was doing what the Lord told him to do, trouble came to him anyway, and intense, extreme trouble. And a lot of Christians feel like if I'm in the will of God, everything should go smoothly and there shouldn't be any trouble or resistance. But the Bible says that's not true. But then he goes on to say that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life. Stop. What did Paul just tell you? Paul just told you when it means pressed out of measure, it means like if you wrung a wet dish rag, you got through wringing, uh, washing the dishes, and you're trying to get the water out, and you squeeze it, and you squeeze it, and squeeze it, until no more water comes out. Paul said we were pressed like that. There was nothing left in us. We got, we got squeezed until we were empty. That's what it means to be pressed out of measure. It means I'm, I'm done. I'm out. I'm, I'm empty. I don't have any more left. Then he says, above strength. What does that mean? If you've ever worked with weights, if you, if you ever worked on a bench, or you did uh, forward presses, or you did any kind of laterals, anything you do that develops your chest, you know there's a certain level of weight you can handle because you can get it up off your chest. And even if you can only do a few reps, you can at least get it up off your chest. When it says to be above strength, that means you hit that, that point where they put so much weight on the bar, you can't even lift it trying to get it up off your chest, and you can't, can't even push it up off your chest because you're above your strength level. So Paul said, we got wrung out. 
we were above strength, and then he said, insomuch that we despaired even of life. It means we didn't want to, we didn't know if we were going to keep on living, or even if we wanted to keep on living. It amazes me how people skip over this verse in the Bible, because you are going to hit a point in your walk with God where sometimes you're going to wonder, should I even keep on living? What am I doing? Should I just go ahead on and go to heaven, or, or why am I living? Why am I here? You can get so pressed as a Christian in the will of God that you begin to wonder, should I even keep living? And I know we don't hear that a lot in our religious training. I know we hear a lot about the prosperity message, how God's going to prosper you, and that's wonderful. And, and we need that. We're supposed to have that because you need that to be encouraged. And you need to, as a matter of fact, uh, the prophets this morning preached a, a powerful prosperity financial anointing message. And it was one of the most powerful things I've ever heard in my life. But the Bible also teaches us that we can have times even in the will of God, where we're so stressed out, where we're so oppressed, we're so spent, we don't even know if we want to keep on living. That's kind of a Christian secret. <laughs> That's what a lot of Christians don't want to talk about because they're all this hallelujah, praise the Lord. You know, I'm above only. It's all good. I got the joy of the Lord. They're that way all the time because they're not being honest. Because Apostle Paul said we weren't like that. That's not what he said in this verse. And so I stopped by to encourage those of you that are feeling that way. You know you're doing what the Lord told you to do, and yet you find yourself in this space. I stopped by to tell you that that is normal. Stop condemning yourself. Stop letting the devil condemn you. Stop feeling like you're not really saved. Stop feeling all those things, because that's not true. Because Apostle Paul teaches us that even in the will of God, trouble can come to us. And even in the will of God, not only can trouble come to us, but it can press us out of measure until we're spent. Trouble can come to us that's above our ability. We're, we're out of strength. We can't lift it. And trouble can come to us so hard until we wonder if we want to keep on living. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to verse 9. Paul says in the King James Version, but we have the sentence of death in ourselves. Okay, let me show you what that says in other versions. Okay? Uh, in, uh, let me see, in the New Inter International Version, it says, indeed, we felt... We had received the sentence of death. New Living Translation, in fact, we expected to die. Berean Study Bible, indeed, we felt we were under the sentence of death. So in other words, what Paul is saying is that we thought this was it. That trouble hit Paul so hard in Asia, he thought it was the end of his life. And I want to make a point here to let you know that if, while in the will of God, you come across this kind of situation, this is normal for a Christian. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. Don't let the devil put you under condemnation. Okay? Now, I'm going to throw this in here. It's what I call, people struggle with what I call the myth of the super Christian. The myth of the super Christian. And what that is, is when you feel like you have to be happy, happy, joy, joy all the time. When you feel like you have to put on a face when you come around the saints that you can't admit when you're struggling, that's the myth of the super Christian, okay? Christ didn't live that way. The Lord needed to take breaks. He went away sometimes very early in the morning to pray. When he got to the Garden of Gethsemane, he wrestled so hard, his sweat was coming out like blood. He was struggling trying to do the will of God, okay? So struggling under the myth of the super Christian is really, really tough when you believe that obeying God means you'll always just be happy, happy, joy, joy. The Bible says that's not true. Paul said, we got hit so hard, we thought this was it. Have you ever been hit so hard by the devil, you thought that this was it? I have. I told you before, I'm a fire survivor. Okay, so I walked out of my room, and my apartment was on fire, and them flames was up on the walls, 13 feet high, whole ceiling was on fire, my kitchen was already burned up, and my son was gone, and there was a big fire explosion at the front of my door. And I was like, how am I going to get out? So that's what I mean when I tell you, you can come to points in life where you think this is it, okay? But then Paul goes on to say something very important. What does Paul say? Paul says in verse 9 again, but we have a sense of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, 
but in God which raises the dead. I want to read that in other translations. Um, New International Version. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. New Living Translation. In fact, we expected to die, but as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. English Standard Version. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death, but that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Now look at that. Look at what Paul says in those different translations. Paul was saying, when this trouble hit, we thought this was it. We thought this was the end of our lives. But then Paul said, the reason it happened was to teach us how to rely on ourselves, but how to not rely on ourselves, but to rely on God who raises the dead. We stop relying on ourselves and learn to rely only on God who raises the dead. But that was to make us rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. So when the devil hits you with trouble so hard, it makes you wonder if this is the end of your life. Paul is saying the point of that trouble is to teach you how to rely only on God and not on yourself. Why? Because there is no other way to learn how to rely on God. You're not going to learn how to rely on God until you are out of your own resources, out of your own wisdom, out of your own strength, out of your own ability. That's how we learn how to rely on God. I know we don't like it because it's rough, but it's what Jesus had to do. Jesus had to trust Father that if Father said to let himself be crucified, Father wasn't going to leave him on that cross and Father wasn't going to leave him in the ground. He had to trust Father even to the point of death. Okay? Now let me throw this in here. When it says God who raises the dead, I want to say this to those of you that are prophetic, and I want to say this to those of you that walk in miracles and that want to walk in miracles. I want you to notice that everywhere in the Bible where a miracle was done, that's because there was a great need and a great situation for it. Like the widow who was in debt and they were coming to take her sons to pay off her debts. Like the people after Jesus had, had preached and taught and they needed food, it was over, over 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. Like Moses in front of the Red Sea with an angry Pharaoh behind him and a Red Sea in front of him. I want you to notice that when the miracles of God, like Elijah, who, who called out the prophets of Baal, he was standing there on that mountain by himself, and there was 150 of them calling on Baal, and after that he got a, a threat word from Jezebel. I want you to notice that these are extreme situations when miracles came forth. Do you know why? Because the extremeness of the situation is what produces the opportunity for God to show himself. Because if it looked like something that a human could solve, God would get no glory out of that. You would rationalize it in your mind and say it was something that you did. So that's why many times we get in these situations from the devil and you're shocked that the devil hits you that hard and you get to the point where you're spent. You don't even know if you want to live anymore or if you're going to make it out of this. This might be the end. And the Bible says the reason stuff like that happens to us is so we can learn how to fully trust in God, but it says God who raises the dead. Remember, Abraham had the knife above his son and he was about to plunge the knife into Isaac's sternum and God said, stay in your hand. God stopped him right here. Do you know why Abraham was willing to do that? Because Abraham believed God so strong that even if he killed Isaac, Abraham believed God was going to bring him back. Because if God says that Isaac shall thy seed be called, then in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Do you see what I'm talking about? So those of you that have been asking God for miracles or want to walk in a miracle realm or trying to get deeper in the prophetic, this is the kind of stuff that happens. Extreme situations. So that when, when the deliverance comes... There is no doubt as to who did it. So stop thinking that walking in the miracle realm or walking in the prophetic realm is always some type of, you know, glamour thing or some type of, that's not true. Many times it's extremes. Extremes, the devil's going to hit you hard or you're going to be in an extreme situation where basically, <clears throat> excuse me, if God don't come through, you're through. 
That's what comes along with learning how to trust in God. That's why we sing that song, Through It All, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God because it's something you have to learn. And it's not going to happen when everything looks good and you're comfortable and you can figure your way out. Okay? But then, Paul goes on to say this. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver. And, hey there, Courtney. Happy Sunday. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver and whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Now wait. What did Paul just tell you? Paul told you that God is a deliverer from death, past, present, and future. He, he hit all three points. He said, who delivered us from so great a death. So in other words, that trouble that came to them in Asia, God delivered them from it. Then he said, and doth deliver. So Paul was saying, whatever it is we're going through now, God is delivering as we go. And then he said, and whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. That's future. God will deliver you from death, past, present, and future. But the, <laughs> the only way you're going to know that is if you're there. I've been there with fire, literal fire, not spiritual fire, although I've been through that too. I've been in a situation where the dragon opened his mouth and breathed fire on me, and I was crying out to God and crying out and crying out and crying out and praying, and it looked like nothing changed. So I had to learn how to depend on God. I had to learn what the Lord was trying to teach me in that situation. I had to learn how to get my armor on. I had to learn how to get my shield off because eventually I got mad. And I found out later God was trying to make the warrior uh, warrior in me stand up. What if I can't give up and deliver myself? Then the pressure will stay on until you run out of self-reliance, until you run out of strength, until you have nothing left but calling on the Lord. That's what will happen. It's rough. I'm not going to try to pretend like it's not rough. But that's what I mean when I tell you I've been there. I've been there. I have been there more than once in my life where I thought this was it. Okay? And so that's the only way you learn how to trust God on that level. Is you're going to have to be in the situation. So that's why I want to be sure you understand that that is scriptural. So stop trying to think that that's a strange thing. It's not a strange thing. There's something else I want to throw out here. I want you to notice. Did you ever notice, if you ever read about Elijah and Elisha, how they were always in these intensely extreme, dramatic situations? Always. You know why? Because it was squeezing that miracle anointing out of them. Because there's no need for a miracle to manifest until there's a need for a miracle to manifest. You see what I mean? Okay? So, because I'm in that hard season right now. Yeah, when you're in that hard season, when you're in that hard season and you're pressed above measure, then that's because God is trying to teach you how to depend on him. That's because God has put you in a situation where it's going to be his power that makes the difference because you're spent. Okay? And that's how God teaches us to trust in him. If we didn't learn those lessons, if that wasn't a part of our walk with God, we would always try to figure it out based on human intellect, and we would always try to solve it based on the strength of our own hand. And then we would take the glory. God doesn't want us to do any of that. God doesn't want us to try to figure it out based on human intellect. God doesn't want us to, to, to solve it with our own hand. And God definitely does not want us taking the glory for ourselves. But the only way that's going to happen is if you are in over your head. So I'm not saying put yourself in a situation like that on purpose. I'm saying use wisdom, obviously. But even when you've done all you can do, trouble can come to you and hit you that hard. And that's when you need a miracle from God. I have been there. Where if God didn't come through, I was through. Is what I'm trying to tell you. And I know that's rough. I know that's rough. I know that's rough. But this is a part of our Christian walk. This is how we learn how to walk in miracles. This is how we learn how to have enough faith in God. Let me give you an example. Do you know why some people can't pull people out of wheelchairs? Do you know why some people can't regrow limbs? Do you know why some prophets can't tell women that, that their bare room is going to be open? Because they've never believed God on that level. Not because God lacks the power, but because you don't believe on that level. You've got to get in situations like, for example, an example, I saw a video on YouTube where this little girl, she was Indian, 
she had this, this terrible skin disease to where her skin was peeling off all the time. She's like eight or nine years old. And they could not figure out what was wrong with her, and they couldn't figure out a cure. And it was awful. And she said she didn't want to go to school. She's crying all the time. And then it began to stink because the flesh began to decay. And she's nine years old, and it was awful. It's hard to look at, but you can look it up. I'm not making that up. Look it up on YouTube. You'll see what I'm saying. And then she said she got a word from a prophet. I think it was one of her relatives, an uncle. And he told her God was going to heal her, and she had to believe. And that man touched that girl's skin with holy oil, and that girl's skin came back to normal. And now she travels the world giving that testimony. You see what I mean? Do you know why that happened? Because she had a prophet in her life that had faith on that level to know that even if your skin is messed up like Job, God has enough power to restore your skin. But some people have never been in a situation where their faith has been tested on that level. That's why you see different results. It's not the power of God because the power of God never changes. It's according to your faith, so it is unto you. So if you want to develop great faith in God, you are going to be in extreme situations in your life. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. That if the need is up here, God is trying to get you to get your faith up there. And God is trying to get you to, to empty out all of what you thought and believe that even if you are in over your head, God is still able even when you are in over your head. There's nothing pleasant about that at first, but when the victory comes, you're going to run around the church. You're going to tear up the pews thanking God. And that's why people that praise God on that level, praise God like they're crazy, is because you know you've been in situations where if God didn't come through, you was through. You see what I mean? Because you have to have faith on that level. And the only way you're ever going to have faith on that level is to be in that situation. Okay? So that's why some people, they've never been squeezed by life. They've never been pressed by the devil so much until they were emptied out and the need was still up here and you were, you were spent. And that's when God showed up and showed you his miracle power. Some Christians have never been through that. Okay? That's why, because the same miracles that are in the Bible happen in our lives right now. I told you. I cursed this growth. Uh, there was a, a growth, a growth, a lump underneath my eye, and I cursed it and commanded it to dry up. And you see, it's gone. Okay, my son, when he was little, had asthma. I laid my hands on my son and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuked that asthma. And my son eventually got rid of his albuterol and got rid of his inhaler, and he's fine now. You see what I mean? That's what I mean. You're going to be in situations. You're going to have to be in situations where your faith is going to have to come up, where you believe that God is able. God is able. Not you're able. Okay? Not you're able to raise the dead. But the power is going to come from the Holy Spirit. Your part is to HBO. Hear what the Lord is saying, believe what the Lord is saying, and obey what the Lord is saying. Now, that's what prophetess uh, Michelle Miller uh, spoke about so wonderfully this morning in my church service. She talked about how the way to turn your finances around is you got to stop managing them according to what you think. And you got to let all that go and start listening to what the Lord is telling you to do. And even in your offerings, give your offerings the way the Lord says give them. And then that's when the miracle finances of God begin to manifest and deliver. So I'm saying that to say that the principles are the same in any area of the kingdom. So that's why those of you that have been asking God for miracles and trying to walk in miracles and expecting miracles. That's why so many extreme things keep happening to you. Because you're going to be in situations where it's just, there's no human way. And when you get in situations where there's no human way, that's when the Holy Spirit shows up. And as long as you believe that God is able and as long as you do what he told you to do. You see what I mean? Just like at the end of my broadcast, uh, sometimes when the Lord, when the Holy Spirit is showing me what to do, sometimes I put my hand on the screen and I tell you to put your hand on the screen and meet my hand. Some people think that's crazy. Some people laugh at that. Oh, you prophetic people. Okay, well, then you're just going to miss your miracle because the power of God will flow from my hand, from the Holy Ghost in me, from my hand through the screen into you. If, you, if that's what the Lord tells you to do, you've got to do what the Lord says do. And that's how so many people miss their miracle walk. You keep trying to figure it out. Just like when, uh, I believe it was Elisha, he was with some of his prophets and they were eating some stew. And then they realized when they ate 
the stew that there was death in the pot. In other words, the food was poisoned. And they were like, oh, Lord, there's death in the pot. Do you know what Elisha did? He got a little cup of salt, and he poured salt into the pot of stew, and then the, the food poisoning went away. Now, <laughs> in what reality can you do that, just get a little bit of table salt and cure food poisoning? See, that was a miracle from God. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's not going to make sense to your natural mind. And that's what Paul is saying in here. Paul said he realized that the reason the devil hit him so hard in Asia was to make him let go of whatever self-reliance he had. Make him let go of whatever reliance on his own strength he was still walking in. Make him let go of trying to figure it out and depending on God who raises the dead. And then Paul said he discovered God delivers you from death, past, present, and future. Now, why is past important? Because some of you looking at me right now are carrying some death from your childhood. Something happened to you when you were, oh, yeah, see, I feel the tongues coming. Thank you, Jesus. Something happened to you when you were a child. You're still carrying it. I stopped by to tell you, God can deliver you from that death. He can deliver you from that death. But, Prophet Taylor, you don't understand. My father abused me. God can deliver you. But, but, but my mother abandoned me. God can deliver you. But my uncle, he molested me. God can deliver you. But, but I got beat up real bad when I was five years old, and it, it broke my legs, and I've never walked right since then. God can deliver you from that emotional abuse, and he can heal your legs, and you can walk upright today. God can deliver you from death in the past. Okay? And then Paul says in uh, verse 10, 2 Corinthians 1, 10, and doth deliver. That means if things are pressing you right now, God can deliver you. Then he says, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. That's the future. That's right. Yeah, see... See, that's hitting my soul strong. Because again, some of y'all looking at me, you've been carrying stuff that you don't have to carry. I'm talking about things that happened to you as a baby that you may not know. And I'm talking about things that happened to you two, three, four, five years of age. You're still carrying it. Some of y'all are carrying, carrying a sense of abandonment. You can't make your family work or you can't find somebody to marry because you don't believe they'll stay with you. you know why? Because your mother left. And that scarred you so badly, now you believe that you're not worth loving or you're not worth staying with. Or maybe your father left. Or maybe you never knew your dad. And if you never do, knew your dad, the death that you carry is the death of identity. You're not really sure who you are. Or you don't, feel really, don't really feel good about who you are. Or you haven't met your father, so you have that relational point to understand, well, this is why I am the way I am, because this is the man I come from. That's a death you've been carrying since you were very little. Because of an absence of fathering, God can deliver you from it. Really, Prophet Taylor? Yeah, he really can. He can really reach down inside of your spirit and your soul, and he can make whole that which is lame. He can fill in that which is missing, and he can lift bitterness out of you like that. Do you know how I know that? Because he did it for me. There was some abuse I had experienced, and I had been carrying it, and I'm talking about many years ago when this happened, and I had been carrying it, and I had gotten so used to carrying it, and I remember one day, God touched my soul and healed me in a moment of time. And the person I was upset with, I forgave him. And I stopped being bitter like that. And I'd been carrying it a long time, and just like that, it went away. And I remember, my son was in the car, if my son was there, he could tell you. Because he was in the car with me when it happened, and we were driving along the street, and I felt the power of God hit me, and like that, my soul was delivered. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever experienced in my life. So that's what I mean when I say that God can deliver you from death in your past, death in your present, and he will deliver you from death in your future. But the only way we know that as Christians is when we get in those situations, when we're in over our heads. So that's why if you have a gift of miracles or you want to walk in miracles, that's why so many intense, extreme things have happened to you. That's the devil trying to destroy you and attack you at a level that you're not even at. But God is not going to let him kill you, even if it feels like you want to die. Even if it feels like. Okay. Uh, all right. Helene, hold on. Okay, Helene, do this. Put your hand on your throat. And say, in the name of Jesus, I cast out the cough from my throat. 
And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command health, healing, breath, life to my windpipe, my trachea, my lungs, and every part of my breathing system. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to be whole. Amen. Right. And the Holy Ghost is also telling me that if they've told you to take any medicine, take that too. Do your part in the natural. I just showed you how to deliver it from the spiritual part, but also if there's been something you've been prescribed, you've got some medicine, the Holy Ghost said, take your medicine in the natural too. So now you've got a spiritual and a physical level of healing. Okay? So HBO, hear what the Lord is saying, believe and obey. That's how the miracle manifests. Because every time I release the physical healing power of God, I feel it flow through me. That's how I know it's real. I'm not making that up. Okay? So that's what I mean when I say, remember the prophetic word for today is in God we trust. But if you have the gift of miracles, or you want to walk in miracles, or um, you have been uh, struggling with that, the reason your life has been so intense, uh, I'm saying mess, then again, then the Lord, uh, uh, your faith will make your cough whole. Um, then make your cough go away and make your throat whole. Uh, then that's why your life has been through such extreme situations. That's why your, your life has been, you've been pressed. That's why you've been to those extremes. That's why that's happened to you. Because many times in life, you can say to the Lord, why God, why? And God might not answer you right away. I stop by to tell you that these scriptures today, many times this is why. He's teaching you to trust in him. Okay? So I want to encourage those of you. This message is not meant to be a discouragement. I want to encourage those of you to learn that if you're going through a time where you're pressed above what you can do, the reason that's happening is so God can help you trust in him and not yourself. Because if the devil, okay, let's take it on a scale of 1 to 10. On a scale of 1 to 10, if the devil is attacking you at a level 9 and your faith is at a level 6, God is trying to get them faith points up. Them three faith points you're missing, God is trying to get that faith up to where the devil's attacking you. That's why he's attacking you up here. And you keep asking God to move him or stop the attack, and neither one of those happens. I've been there too. The devil just keep coming, and he keep coming at this level, and you don't understand why God's not hearing you. God is hearing you. It's just that the answer isn't what you think it is. The answer that you want it's for God to make it stop. The answer that God has given you is God is saying, trust me on this level. You only trust me at a level six. The enemy is coming at you at a level nine. God is saying, I want you to trust me for the next three, three faith points. I want you to let me lift your faith to this point where you can answer the devil and speak to his attack on a level nine. That's why. That's why I want you to be encouraged and not discouraged. That if you are being pressed beyond measure, out of measure, above strength, where you even know if you want to live or die, that's the devil trying to take you out. He's hitting you higher at a higher faith level than you are right now. But that is God saying, because I'm trying to pull you up to a greater trust in me. Amen. Amen, Courtney. Amen. Um, I can't. I have to read all that. I'm, I'm not seeing all that. But uh, I'm going to pray over that court case. Father, in the name of you, let me listen to the Holy Ghost first, Courtney. Okay, Courtney, this is the word of the Lord to you. God said he's going to deliver you. You will be delivered. But he's going to deliver you in such a way that he gets the glory. It's not going to be explainable by man. And you're going to shout and give him praise and testimony, and God will deliver you. But it's not going to be by the hand of man. It's going to be by the Spirit of God. So God wants you to listen to what he's telling you and just do what the Lord is saying to do because it's not going to be able to be worked out on a human level. Mm. That's from the Spirit of God, Courtney. Amen. So again, that's why I want you to be encouraged to help you understand why these things have been happening to you because that's the only way you can learn. That's the only way you can learn how to trust in God. There is no other way. There is no other way. I know we all wish there was another way. Remember when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he wished there was another way too, remember? He wished that there was another way to redeem us without having to go to the cross. 
He wished that there was another way to get back to heaven and be re-glorified as God without having to go through the cross. He wished there was another way to be in the will of God but not have to drink that bitter cup. What was the cup that Jesus had to drink? The wrath of God, the, the bitterness of sin, uh, or the weight of mankind's sin, the tears of God. Part of God's tears are bitter because when God looks at his creation and looks what sin has done, he cries bitter tears. Jesus had to drink that. He had to drink the Father's wrath. He had to drink the bitterness of sin, the Father's tears. He had to drink all the taste of all of our sins because the Lord became sin, and he didn't want to do that. So remember that in the garden, Jesus asked Father, is there another way? Okay, but Jesus himself had to trust Father on a higher level that if he were to drink the bitter cup, and allow himself to be crucified, God was not going to leave him on that cross, and God was not going to leave him in that grave. Jesus himself had to go through that. That's why I'm trying to tell you, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. Okay? Because if the devil is hitting you on that higher level, it's only because God is trying to pull you up to a new level of faith and a new level of miracles. Okay? Because that's the difference between people that just kind of, you know, amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. They don't take all that. And people that praise God like they're crazy. People that praise God and the tears just start flowing. And you can't stop the tears. Okay? Because you know what he's done for you. You know that you've been in situations to where if he hadn't come through, you was through. Okay? So I want you to be encouraged today that whatever the devil's trying to do, and if he didn't press you so hard, you wonder whether or not you even want to keep living. That's God trying to pull you up to a higher level of faith so you can see that God is still God even at that level of attack. Okay? All right. So uh, I've had a couple of prayer requests already. And uh, God bless you for putting them on the screen. Now, if you have any more prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. We'll pray right now on the spot. Um, so we can pray and we can get God's miracle power in on the situation because he wants to get the glory and he's going to get the glory and he's going to deliver you, but you have to do it his way. You have to do what he's telling you to do. If he tells you to put a little salt in your food and that cures food poisoning, then that's what you have to do. If he tells you to go on a two-day fast and he's going to deliver you, then that's what you have to do. If he tells you to give an offering, Whatever size that offering is, if that's what the Lord says, then that's what you have to do. Okay? So if you've got any more prayer requests, put them on uh, the screen right now. I'll pray over them. Okay, now, as I tell you every week, when you see me close my eyes and speak in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost, who out there needs physical healing, who out there needs deliverance, demons cast out, and who out there needs a word on finances? Okay, so we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to go in the Spirit. I'm going to pray in tongues for a minute. I'm going to listen to the Holy Ghost. And then we're going to deal with physical healing, casting out demons, and a word on finances. All right? Okay, God is showing me that somebody is dealing with something on the side of their face. Um, all right, Helene, hold on a second. Let me finish this and I'll give you a word. Remind me again in a minute to give you a word, Helene. Okay, the Holy Ghost is saying that somebody's dealing with something on the side of their face. So I'm seeing in the spirit either like a burn victim, you have burnt flesh, or maybe you have like a, 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 a wart or a lesion or a boil, or you have some type of disfigurement over on the left side of your face. God wants to heal you from that disfigurement. So do this right here. Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me to put my hand on the screen. Put your hand on the screen. Okay, put your hand on the screen and touch my hand. Put your other hand on your forehead and say whoop. I didn't mean to flip it and then say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I command my forehead to be every whit whole in the name of Jesus Christ I command this lesion to go I command the burnt skin to go I command my skin to come together I speak to the atoms and the molecules and I command every layer of epidermis on my body to be 100% whole in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I, Nazareth I curse the boil, I curse the legion, I curse the burnt skin, and I command you to dry up from the root, fall off, and let new skin, baby skin, be grown and be every whit whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do it just like that. Okay? 
All right, Helene, uh, let me ask the Lord, let me ask the Holy Ghost, does he have a word for you? The word of the Lord to you, uh, God says to you, Helene, my daughter, <clears throat> I know your every prayer. I know your every cry. I know the desires of your heart. I know the stuff you haven't talked to anybody about. I know the stuff that you're holding in secret, that you're afraid to speak of. And I say to you, my daughter, I will deliver you, but I'm trying to pull you up to where you trust in me and not yourself. Because you're still trying to figure it out. You're still trying to make it make sense up here, and you're still walking by sight. You're still thinking it's going to make sense here. And God is saying, it's not going to make sense to your mind, Helene. It's not going to make sense to your eyes. You're going to have to trust me. And as you trust me, I will release my word. In fact, I am already over on the other side in victory. That thing you're worried about, anything you struggle with, I'm over on the side of victory where it's already over, looking back at you, calling to you, telling you to come on over to where I am. But to do that, you might have to walk on water. To do that, you might have to walk through a bunch of enemies. To do that, you might have to fight through a bunch of demons. But I'm already over on the other side where the victory has been gained, telling you to come on to me, walk to me, come to me, Helene, and don't be afraid by what you see. But trust my voice and my word, and you can come live in the victory that I've already won for you, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Okay, uh, so back, let me check some more on physical healing. Mm. Okay, the Lord is saying somebody has a stent or something in their left shin. You got a metal rod or you get some type of stent or wood or you get some kind of pain in your left shin. Take your left hand, put it on your knee if you can't reach your shin. If you can reach all the way down to your shin, put it on your shin. If that causes you pain, whatever, put your hand on your shin and say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command my shin to be every whit whole. I command all the muscles and the ligaments and the joints and the tendons and every atom and molecule in my shin, all the connective tissue, I command you to be every whit whole and to be like new, like the injury or the disease never happened. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command it. Amen. See, I felt that power of God manifest when that happened. Okay? All right. Uh, let me check and see if there's any unclean spirits need to be broke off. Oh, Lord. Okay. All right. The Holy Ghost is telling me that, excuse me, there is there are spirits of misogyny and misandry that need to be broken off. Misogyny is hatred of women. Misandry is hatred of men. God is saying that among the saints, that somebody out there is still walking in hatred of women and still walking in hatred of men. So in the name of Jesus, I command misogyny to go right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I command misandry to go right now in Jesus' name. And the Lord is saying that'll be a hindrance, that is a hindrance for you getting married. So I want you to stop hating, hating over what happened in the past. Stop hating and be delivered right now today so that you can love, love with my love, love that will flow freely when I bring the right person in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen and amen. All right, let me see if there's anything else in the spirit needs to be broken off. All right, let's check on finances. Oh, yes, the Lord said that the word is nigh you, even in your mouth. God is saying, why are you delaying in living your dream? Your finances are where your dreams are. When you live in your dream, you have round-the-clock energy. You have continual joy. Even when you hit rough parts, because when you're doing what you love to do, you still have energy to do it. God is saying you want financial deliverance. You're going to have to get back in the lane of your dreams. You're not put on earth to work a job. You're not put on earth to create a career. You're put on earth to live according to a purpose, the purpose of God. And that's where your money is and what God created you to do. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. You're not going to get financial deliverance, not living your purpose. You got to find the reason you were born and get in that. Mm, mm, mm. All right. All right. 
so I think that's it. Well, praise God. I am edified. I am blessed by all this, what God says today. This was a blessing to me. And like you hear me say all the time, I count it an honor and a privilege to be used by God because truly it is not I, but it's the Christ that's in me. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit. And I've been blessed and edified and encouraged all day today because I was so blessed by the message in service this morning. That just spoke to my heart on so many levels. And I'm blessed by what the Holy Spirit said here this afternoon. So God bless you. I, I want you to walk in what you've learned today. Walk in and God we trust. Understand what God is uh, trying to do in your life. And how he's going to pull you up to those higher levels of miracle faith. And how uh, he's already on the other side waiting for you in victory. Waiting for you to come on over. Even if that means you have to walk on the water to get there. Okay? Because once you walk on the water, you'll never be the same. Every time you open your mouth, you're going to let people know what God has done for you. Because it, it took a miracle for you to get over to the victory that God had for you. But God delivered you from death and brought you into deliverance through his miracle power. All right? So, uh, again, check back later for my No More Genies upload. Uh, I'm going to get that loaded up because, like I said, Thursday night wasn't happening. But uh, I'm going to get that loaded up because I do want to uh, make sure you have that installment as well. Okay? Thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you. Remember that in God we trust and God is able. All you need to do is HBO. Hear, believe, and obey. God bless.